the 14th annual Starbecue Festival. So let me explain real quick. We don't actually stay in Roanoke. No, we're in Salem, technically, like right within those limits, but it still takes me like 12 minutes to get to the hospital. We're about a half mile over the line between Roanoke and Salem. So we're going to downtown Salem. We're about to go eat a lot of barbecue. Victoria said, do we even have to talk about this? Because I'm hungry. I'm hungry. Let's go. Oh, look at Bambi over here. It's important. I need my ID. Oh, ID check? Yeah. All right. My ID. Yeah, grab it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, where's all my party? Where's my party crowd at, man? He said, where's my party crowd at? She just walked in. <laughs> Okay, so here's the situation. I literally said as we were walking up to the festival, do you think we should have cash? And we definitely should have because you need tickets to get drinks that require cash. However, so we walk up to the table and we were like, oh man, we don't have cash. Dude's like, there's a bank across the street. Just go stop in. That's so I got money from the ATM. She comes back and I'm a magic beer fairy. One of the gentlemen that was at the table that denied us tickets without cash came over and you know how people like slide cash in your hand real quick? He, yeah, he palmed two beer tickets to me and he was like, you know, for you young people, we really should have that figured out. Like we have it in some places, but not others. And I'm like, that's really nice of you. And like I said, we probably should have had cash walking in. So that was super nice of him. We've been in here for seven minutes. <laughs> okay, so now we've been here for 10 minutes. Okay, and I got three brisket nachos from Buddy's Barbecue. We were just standing there trying to decide. And they were like, hey, y'all want a brisket nachos? Because we were going to get one thing from each place because it's a barbecue festival with two trucks. But that's cool. It's a small town. So thank you, buddy. Thank you so much. We tipped them big. But I obviously, like, thank you. We've received free drinks and uh, free food in 10 minutes. What is going on? Are we in the Twilight Zone? Sweat from that Kubota. Free games. It's a wrap on the barbecue festival, which it's actually funny. Travis Denning was the headliner for any country music fans out there. Back at my radio station in Charleston, 92.5 Kick and Country, shout out. Uh, he actually came in for a radio tour uh, a couple years back and really nice kid. And he's doing really well for himself, touring with Brothers Osborne right now. So that's exciting for him. I have to say though, this might be my kind of festival now at my age. It ended at nine o'clock. So, we're out of here. Yeah, we're on our way home. In bed by 9.30. <laughs>
set an alarm for 345 because we got an adventure going on hiking McAfee's knob but we're trying to get there for sunrise so wish us luck learning valuable information it's not too early for that people die on the Appalachian Trail yeah people die on a lot of trails do I look spooky? <laughs> there's a bug on my ear <laughs> so spooky okay let's go let's go Buddy. Yeah, but we are so close to the top. It's 3.9 or so. Call it's it four. Let's call it four. 3.9, 1800 foot elevation gain. And the uh, sun's about to be up, so. We Let, might barely miss it, but. That's okay. We're close. Keep on pushing. We are booking it though. <laughs> Fake out. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Hold on, how fast is my heart beat? 160. Hey, we made it. We made it. Totally worth it. Might be the hardest hike I've ever done, but it's. <laughs> This is a pretty incredible view up here. What do we think? Worth it? Definitely worth it. <laughs> that is literally the hardest hike I have ever done and the fastest I've ever done it. But. So we did that in about an hour 45, just under two. Probably like an hour 40. Hey, that's not bad, 1800 feet elevation. But got blisters on my ankles. <laughs> it'll be a lot easier on the way down. We got the Breakfast of Champions. We're getting the time lapse right now. And we just missed sunrise. It was really close, but it is stunning up here. I'm so happy we did this, totally worth it. We made it up. I ain't going back down. She's staying. I'm leaving her here. <laughs> I'll tell the dogs you love them. No, bring them up. <laughs> no, I'm not coming back. Maybe. <laughs> uh, so here's something that you should probably know. You're going to sweat your butt off coming up here. We're doing this. Especially a very... if you're like booking it, trying to get up here. We're doing this in late summer. So it's not even that hot, but we were pouring sweat. And when you get to the top, you get the breeze coming off the top of the mountain and I was freezing. <laughs> it's chilly. There's mm -hmm. another gentleman up here right now taking photographs and he was like, I really wish I had brought my jacket. He was <laughs> like, I didn't think I need it because I'd be pouring sweat. And that's exactly why you do need it because you get cold quick. <sighs> so just be pre prepared for a strenuous hike. Also bring plenty of water. We definitely finished one whole water bottle and it's only 60 degrees out here. 60, probably about 65 now. She says water bottle, she means hydro flask. It's 40 ounces, so. Yeah, so that's big. That's big yeah, one. yeah, not like a little one. Um, so we finished one between the two of us coming up. So if it's hotter, make sure you bring more. They recommend to bring bug spray, headlamps, and an extra flashlight, mm -hmm. uh, possibly a walking stick if that's your style. Mm -hmm. um, 
but other than that I mean a snack when you get to the top and you feel good about it you know it's beautiful I haven't gotten up this early to do anything besides work since probably Austin and Mount Bonnell yeah yes and he made me get up for the sunrise there and that was less than 800 feet so in all stairs not that's not a real hike no <laughs> we can show you that episode here somewhere <laughs> Okay. You'd think we'd be a lot faster moving on the way down, but I think we're slower. It's a pretty treacherous trail, but we couldn't really see anything on the way up, except for what we could with flashlights and headlamps. So now we get to see what we actually walk through, and it's pretty treacherous at points. Cleaning up the shelter for these nice folks. Show them what we got. Meant to mention. Bear spray. I don't know if y'all remember last time we went on a hike. Thomas had us making a lot of noises and singing some songs to keep the bears away. No, we had our own playlist and we appreciate y'all's suggestions on that episode. We'll link that here for you. But now we got bear spray and actually a bear bell that's supposed to be here today. What does that even do? You just attach it to your pack or whatever and it just jingles the whole time and gives the bear a good chance of letting them know that you're around. That's all. Pretty simple. Hopefully we never run into one, but you know. Listen, we're just trying to like stay vigilant and like stay aware. And we hiked two hours in the dark this morning. So, you know, yeah. felt and, appropriate. And that last trail we did come across two big old piles of bear crap on the trail so yeah they're there they're here now i say treacherous but what i really mean is like this is actually part of the at the appalachian trail so it's you know rocks everywhere kind of got to watch your step go over this here type of situation so that's what i kind of mean like when you're doing it in the dark for that sunrise thing you you really just gotta like flashlight is clean flashlight in addition to the headlamp yeah the headlamp wasn't even enough honestly. yeah because well the headlamp's shaking and like you have to turn your head in order to like get the light to go where you want it to so you know it's not super convenient you just really got to watch your footing on this trail that's all i mean i don't mean that like you gotta like go bouldering or like well, throw you, ropes like, up on on rocks and honestly, stuff with most of the trail the worst that's gonna happen is you trip it's not like super high cliffs or something you know but and you don't want to trip in the dark. Yeah. yeah, who wants to fall on rocks? That's no fun. No. On our way out, obviously we couldn't see anything. Uh, did you just pop up into the screen real quick? Like, <laughs> we come to this little like, I, it's literally like a point zero one spur trail that comes out and you can overlook this right here. I don't know if, hold on. Yeah. That's pretty cool. So Victoria's like, man, we could have just done the point five and. Now we know. Skipped hiking eight miles today. Oh, it is almost 11 and we're not even back to the car. We're close though. We just got to the almost there sign. Yeah. Oh, it's the road. We made it. Like we said, when we pulled up, we were one of three cars, correct? Three cars. The entire parking lot is filled now. Oh. All the way to back through there. So, that tells you how popular this trail is. And we got the good shot. <laughs> <laughs> we made it. Never felt so good to see a car I could sit in. I know. All right, on to adventure number two for the day. Paddle boarding, because it got hot outside. We're about to go jump in the water. Where are we going? Messina Park. All right, never been? Going on the Roanoke River. All right. All you right. want to see my casualty from this morning? Hold on. Ew, look at that blister. Check it out. It's That's... so gnarly. 
literally the biggest blister I've ever had. That's disgusting. Thanks, man. So we've scoped out the situation here at Wasina Park. The river's right underneath this bridge right here, but it's kind of similar to what we showed you over at the Roanoke River Greenway, very shallow. So we made an executive decision, boards are staying in the truck today, and we're taking out the tubes. But we got an extra tube for the cooler. That's a little less work. I'm exhausted. We got our post hike nap in. So we're slightly rejuvenated, but not really trying to put in a whole lot of work. So this is more of a leisurely, just get wet type thing. Why does it feel like that's a lot of work? <laughs> I do know that we just saw two people bring down inflatables to the river. So I think they're floating it without fins. So that might be your option there. Ready? Yeah, let's do it. got its own float. So we're just sitting here floating at Wasina Park and I noticed the sign. I don't think you can see it very well, but it says Wasina and Vic Thomas. How ironic is that? And in case you don't know, I have Victoria, that's Thomas, and that's weird. <laughs> <laughs> I know we've mentioned these before, but since we've gotten these paddle boards, our way of not having to like worry about the river taking us has been these anchors. You can see it kind of down there right now. These anchors allow us to be lazy and we are very appreciative of those anchors. We've got two of them just in case we got large loads like full coolers, multiple people and heavy currents. We've had to lay down both anchors, but for the most part, we got three coolers here and one anchor in this rocky river pretty much does the job. Cheers to laziness. <laughs> they got you. Oh, I'm starting to drag. <laughs> on the rocks. So close. You might get a rock up your butt. Oh, no. Did you get a rock up your butt? No. Nope. Oh, you did it. Oh, nope, there it was. Oh, there it was. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.